Hello gamers, my name is Chuck Siegert. I am the designer of the upcoming DVG game Zero Leader. Zero Leader, it looks like, will be on Kickstarter in just a couple of weeks, which is very, very exciting. So for today's update, I wanted to show you how the dogfight mechanic works in Zero Leader. The Zero Leader dogfight mechanic is very similar to the Corsair Leader dogfight mechanic with a couple of added tweaks which I think really make the game different. So first thing I'm going to show you, I've got two bandits out here. The first bandit is a 1942 F4F Wildcat Average, which is plus zero ATA. Next to him, I have a 1945 P51 Mustang Average, which is an ATA of plus two. So you can immediately see that the P-51 Mustang is a more dangerous vehicle than the F-4F Wildcat. Not to mention the two hit numbers are lower on the Mustang, which means it has a better chance of damaging and or destroying your aircraft. Dangerous. For the Japanese, I have chosen the A6M-2-0 Veteran Matsuda, and I've also chosen a KI-84 Frank Average Taknibana. The reason I've chosen those two airplanes is to give you a little bit of difference between the two types of airplanes. Um, the KI-84 Frank is a little bit more late war. But the three things that I've added that change the dogfight maneuvering and battling just a little bit are the maneuver MN, R for robustness, and AG for aggression. What do those mean? Well, maneuver is a plus or minus modifier that indicates whether that aircraft was very maneuverable. In this case, both of them have a one in their maneuver, which means any maneuver that they choose on the dogfight sheet, they get a plus one. Next is the robustness. As you can see, the zero is minus one. The Frank is a zero. The reason for that is the zero didn't have self-sealing fuel tanks, anything like that. It was easier to destroy. So now the enemy gets a modifier whenever they fire at you. So. Uh, flying a zero is wonderful when you're maneuvering, not so hot getting shot at. The other thing is the aggression, and you'll notice that Matsuda has a one aggression, Taknibana has a zero aggression. What that means is the zero aggression means that he can take one stress and shake two dice instead of one whenever he's doing a maneuver or whenever he is doing an attack. When the enemy is doing a maneuver, he can also use that. So. Anytime there's a maneuver going on, he can take a stress and shake two dice and choose the lowest of the two. When he's attacking, he can take a stress, shake two dice, and take the highest of the two. Matsuda has a one on the aggression, and what that means is he can also take a stress, he will get two dice, but he also gets a plus one modifier onto each of those dice, um, or a minus one modifier if he's going low. The idea is that he can modify his die roll um, so he's a lot more aggressive, typically pushes his aircraft right to the edge of the envelope, which does not make his maintenance crews happy, but, you know, they'll get over it. You'll notice also the dogfight sheet. If you've got Corsair Leader, you're familiar with it. If not, it's a very simple uh, method of taking care of how the bandits maneuver and how my fighter planes will maneuver. The big difference between the Zero dogfight and the uh, Corsair dogfight is maneuvering factor. Now remember these are all prototypes. I'm using miniatures because I don't have prototype zero and frank uh, counters yet, but this dogfight is a, a prototype and it's a good thing because in the enemy maneuver success I'm missing a minus MN for minus maneuver, but uh, we already know that and we're going to fix it. So let's get into the battle. The first thing we do in turn one we move. There were no attacks or anything like that. We move. Now it's the time for the, the bandits to move. These two cannot move because there are aircraft in their area, so they stay in that area and they engage. All right. So now, top of turn two, uh, fast pilots can attack. As you can see, both of my pilots, their speed is slow, which would normally mean that the bandits get to fire at me first. But Matsuda has an SA, a situational awareness. He's more awake than virtually anybody else, so he gets to move in the fast and also in the slow. So he's going to spend his SA to get first crack at the P-51 Mustang. 
So Matsuda has to decide what maneuver do I wish to pull. Okay, we're head to head. Matsuda is a plus two ATA. The P51 Mustang is a plus two ATA, so they are even. I do have a plus one for my maneuver, and I can use my aggression, which would give me another plus one, but let's look. With a plus one, I wanna play it safe. I'm just gonna do it in my sights. So, and I'm not gonna use aggression for this right now, so I just get to add one to my die roll and see what happens. I roll a six, I add one to that, it becomes a seven, which means I am plus one attack. So I did gain something by going in these in my sights. So now we do the friendly attack resolution, which is a D10, plus the friendly ATA, which is two, so I'm, I'm plus two, minus the enemy ATA, which is two, so I have nothing going on right now. So right now I'm ter perfectly even, but I did pick up the plus one attack here, so I'm actually a plus one. Now I am going to use a stress so that I can do my aggression. That means that I get two die and I get to add one to each of my die. So I'm actually going to be plus two on my die rolls. Well, when you shake two tens, I guess having plus two really doesn't matter. This P51 Mustang goes down in flames and my zero is a happy camper. Next up, he was the only one that could move in the fast. So the next up is the bandits attack. Now the bandits, they've got the F4F Wildcat left. He's hooked up with the KI-84 Frank, so let's see what happens with him. The first thing the bandits do is their enemy maneuver choice, which is a D10 plus enemy ATA. Well, the enemy ATA is zero, so you shake a D10. Depending upon his positioning, that's the chart you use. He's not tailing. He is neutral, advantaged or neutral. He is not disadvantaged. He is not tailing or tailed. So advantage neutral, shakes a 10. He's going to try an out of the sun. Actually a very good shake. So now he is out of the sun. He is zero. This guy is a plus one. So he's actually minus one. And there is a maneuver of one. So he's actually minus two on his success thing. And we're going to use our aggression on here, which just means we get to shake two dice. So now he's going to do the enemy maneuver success two dice, and he is minus two. So we'll take that two, and a minus two means zero, so his in my, uh, out of the sun means minus two positions. That's not a good thing. That spins him around, immediately puts the KI-84 on his tail. All right, now the slow pilots get to attack. That was the end of the bandits. So now the slow pilots get to attack. Well, obviously, Taknibana has a, a very good shot. He's probably not going to perform any maneuver because he is tailing. Um, he could do an out of the, out of in my sights or out of the sun, but he's in this case he's not going to maneuver. He's just going to go at him. So he's got a plus one. The F4F is a zero, so he is plus one on his attack roll. He is tailing, so he gets plus three on his attack roll. So he's actually plus four on his attack roll. He needs an eight in order to kill. He's plus four, and you know what? He's not gonna take any chances. He's using his aggression to get two shakes, plus four, and he shook two fours. So thankfully, his plus four is just enough to shoot down the F4F Wildcat. So at the end of that turn, we have been very successful. The P51 and the F4F have both been shot down. Thankfully, the F4F screwed up his maneuver, uh, which made it very easy for the KI-84. So after that, after the slow pilots attack, the aircraft move. There are no bandits to move, so the aircraft move and that turn would end. Now, as you can see, the aircraft have entered the target area and waiting for them are two bombers. Now these bombers are a little bit different. The SBD, as you can see, is a plus zero. So he's, for a bomber, he's actually kind of maneuverable. But you'll notice that his attack numbers are in a bracket. Being in a bracket means that he's got a gunner, not necessarily the forward guns. I know that some, the Dauntlesses did have forward guns and that type of stuff, but it, for game purposes, the forward guns on the Dauntless really aren't going to be used. What these brackets mean is that it can fire at any enemy aircraft, or friendly aircraft in our case, that gets advantage on it, 
or tailing it, then it can fire back. If I attack head on, which is the worst as far as uh, modifiers for the attack roll, but if I attack head on or neutral, he cannot fire back. So if I want to be safe, I go at it neutral, but if I want some advantages, I do have to take the chance of getting fired back at. Big difference here, the B-25. Notice that it's got its numbers in brackets, but they are also black. The difference is the black means turrets, which means that they can fire at you at any angle. So attacking them head on is just as dangerous as coming from behind. It gives you a little bit more of a tactical feel if you're attacking a Dauntless, do I take the minus or the minus or no uh, modifiers to not get shot at, or do I want to get close and take the chance? The B-25, it don't matter. You're getting shot at no matter what. So you just make the decision of which way you want to attack. So once again, let's take my zero. Matsuda is going to go after the B-25. So the first thing that Suda's going to do is he's going to, it doesn't matter, he's going to get shot at no matter what, so he's going for the, the bonus here. So he is going to attempt to maneuver on the B-25. Um, there are no slow pilot or fast pilots. I should have noticed, mentioned that. Uh, Matsuda's situational awareness was wasted, so he's, he, or not wasted, used, so he can't use it. Uh, there are no bandits, so we are now to the um, slow pilots attack phase. So Matsuda is going after the B-25, chooses to maneuver. He is plus two ATA, plus one maneuver, so he's plus three. The B-25 is minus one, so he's actually plus four on his die roll. He is going to do a half loop. A half loop plus four on his die roll, eight plus four is 12, so he gets four positions and a plus one attack. Now, obviously you don't need all four positions. That would take you right back to neutral. But four positions allows you to stop after two positions. You're right behind the bomber, you're tailing him, and you get a plus one attack. So now for his attack, he is plus one for this. He's plus two for his ATA. He is minus one for the bomber, or the bomber's ATA, which is actually a plus one. So he is plus four for his attack roll. If he wants to make sure of it, he can use another um, stress, but that decision will come in a second. The first thing that happens though is because he is behind that bomber, that bomber gets to fire back. Bombers return fire after you maneuver, but before you attack. So he has maneuvered, the bomber gets to fire at him. The bomber is minus one. He's plus two, so the bomber is minus three, but his robustness is minus one, so the bomber is actually minus two on his attack. Three minus two is one, the bomber misses. Good. Now I get to attack. I'm going to use my stress just because I want a certain kill. So I'm attacking now, I get plus two, I get plus three because I am tailing, and I get plus one for here. So I am plus four, plus five, plus six. I am plus six with my aggression. I get an extra die, I'm plus seven. So yeah, I killed and then killed and probably took down one that hasn't even flown yet. So that was a good solid kill on a B-25 by my zero. My KI-84 is going after the SBD Dauntless. He chooses to just come in there. He's not gonna maneuver. He's going to attempt an in my sights attack. Um, he is plus one and plus one for a maneuver. So he is plus two. The bomber is a zero, so he is plus two. He could use his aggression. He's not going to. He's doing an in my sights. That dice got away. It's a four. Plus two makes it a six, so he gets a plus one attack. Now he's going to attack the bomber. The bomber cannot fire back. He's in front of it. He didn't maneuver, so the gunners do not get a shot at him. So he's plus one. Plus one for his ATA, so he's plus two. The bomber is a zero, so it doesn't move. He is plus two for his attack. Now he's going to use a stress. So he gets to shake two dice, plus two. He needs sixes. He gets a one and a five. In baseball, they call that a swing and a miss. He did not hit the bomber. All right. At the end of that turn now, that bomber is still flying. Takni 
Bana is definitely saying every Japanese swear word he knows, and the SPD pilots are super, super happy. So we go to the next turn. Airplanes can uh, move, but nobody needs to move. We're all in the same area. So let's go at it again. Takdebana, he's never say die. He's going after him one more time. So he's coming at him with a plus one maneuver and a plus one ATA. Uh, the SPD has a zero ATA. So he's going to go for position this time. He's plus two. He's going to attempt a yo-yo. And he's not going to use his stress because he doesn't want to, he wants to save a stress in case this guy shoots back at him. So he's just a plus two on a yo-yo. Six makes an eight. So he's plus one position and plus one attack. So he is now advantaged. So he gets a plus one for being advantaged. He gets a plus one for the shake. He gets a plus one because of his ATA. He doesn't lose anything because the bomber has zero, so he's going to be plus three. But before he gets to fire, the bomber fires at him because he is, he's is he got the bomber disadvantaged. So the bomber gets to fire at him. The bomber is a zero. He's a plus one. So the bomber is actually minus one. His robustness is zero. So the bomber stays at a minus one. The bomber shakes a four, which becomes a three. The bomber misses. Taknibana now gets to attack. He is plus one, plus two, plus three. So he is a plus three, not going to use aggression. Seven plus three is 10, a successful kill. The SPD Dauntless is destroyed. These two come home, two kills each. A very, very successful mission. All right, so that is how the dogfight mechanic works in Zero Leader. If you have any questions or comments, please mention them on Facebook. I love talking about this game with anybody who has any questions or anything like that. Uh, if you have any comments or concerns, please uh, make them known because uh, I love knowing what people are thinking. And if I've made any mistakes, I certainly want to know about it. So feel free to let me know. Um, otherwise, until the next time we see you, enjoy, and we'll be coming on Kickstarter soon.